Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge & Company. There is in New York a Bella Abzug Leadership Institute. It mentors and trains young women in high school and college to become confident citizens and our next leaders. The president and co-founder, Liz Abzug, was fortunate to learn firsthand the skills and passion they will need. Liz, Bella's daughter, is a leader herself, but with the Institute, she's ensuring that there will be more women to follow. And she's my guest. Thank you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so, are there going to be leaders to follow? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I have enormous confidence and optimism about these young women that are not only um, in the streets and, believe it or not, uh, becoming leaders in all sorts of professions already and in social justice, feminist activism, I feel very confident. Do they, um, do they understand a concept of power? Uh, I do believe that they do. I think that a lot of times older women think that younger women don't. Right. But I think that's a wrong assumption. And I think that the way they're organizing themselves uh, speaks to me that they do understand. Now, sometimes you'll have a self-esteem, some lagging of uh, some self-esteem issues among some of the women, um, and it's, we have to deal with that. That confidence. The confidence. Do they sit there, do they talk, get up and talk and hold themselves? I can't, st I just always want to go up no, and that's say, what, you know, as stand a, up. <laughs> right, as a professor at Barnard Columbia who teaches women in leadership, yeah. one of the things, you know, I've said that I don't want to see ever again a, a girl raising her hand and apologizing for right. a statement or a question that she right. makes, and you never see boys doing that, right. ever. Yeah. Do, they, do they talk about the relationships they have with other people? What do you mean, other guys or, or other well, girls? Whoever, whatever partner they're going to have. Um, yes, actually. And, uh, and do they have problems with the concept of equality? Though? Well, it's a lot of discussion. Yeah. I find that, thank God, um, you know, a lot of these young women are discussing with their partners you know, where, uh, you know, shared responsibilities and working through some of these political and the, the issue of pay and some yeah. of the, the, still the low numbers we have in the top echelons of power. You mentioned um, that the older women don't think they know, but there is the separation between the older and the younger. And, and, and it's, it's so fascinating because they, the younger people could learn so much from the older people. And do they? Yes, I do. Do they know about the older well, people? Well, I think, you know, some younger women who know a bit say, well, okay, thank you very much, Gloria, Bella, you know, Geraldine, mm -hmm. Ferrara, et cetera. But then there are many who understand that they really need to know the context of mm -hmm. the second wave of feminism and the rights that they have today wouldn't, they would not have had it not been for all the work that was done uh, in the 70s, the laws that were passed for women. So you do have to really make sure that this history is preserved that they understand and appreciate and respect it. Yeah. But you also have to teach those of us who are older what they're doing exactly. and how they're doing it and how they see it. That's right. You and know? we need to support that. And Absolutely. you know, we need to see But we don't have an opportunity to do that. Well, I believe and I try very <laughs> hard to create that intergenerational yeah. work with everything that I'm doing in the feminist work that I do and in the political activism that I do. But also we need to understand as we understood when we we're growing up that the linguistics have to be determined by these young women. The way they do their activism, the way they understand gender equity has to, we should, uh, we should support it. We have to give them the context, but the way it's expressed and the linguistics in which they do it mm -hmm. is really their time to do so. Right. Well, how do they do it? Well, what? through social media. How many of them are social, socially conscious about I think now, the world now, and, and engaged in Now it? I have many, many students, young women who are. I mean, say like five years ago, it would less so. Now we've seen, I think, a renaissance, a reemergence of social justice in issues that young women really care about and, and really do organize largely on the internet through mm -hmm. social media and through blogs. But they also come out when it's really like take back the night, you know, yeah. against violence, et cetera. Uh, definitely against violence and against this whole anti abortion movement. Absolutely. I mean, that, if anything that they're doing, that's really what's creating right. a whole massive thing. My granddaughter is uh, 18 and she's up at college at, um, in Hampshire. And I get this email from her Are you going to the rally? <laughs> so I emailed back, I said, What rally? You know? <laughs> and they came in to go to the Planned Parenthood yeah. rally. And it just warmed my heart. I was yeah. thrilled about that. Yeah. So it's... it's I, I mean, I think as conditions have gotten a lot worse in the world and in our country, mm -hmm. I think that the young people, women, young women and men, but young women have understood that they have to do something, that they can't, you know, be cynical, that they have to try to organize again, and that they... But they have to... They're doing it in ways in which somewhat different than yeah. we did. And, well, know. we didn't have the Internet. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Bella, I, Bella on, uh, said on one of the things on Bally's site, 
uh, that she believes women are going to change uh, power, change the concept of power, and that w because we haven't had any power and because we don't know all those little things about money and stuff like that. You think that's still true? Yes, I do. I think that with just with the sheer election, uh, I mean, the race of uh, Hillary Clinton for president and, dare I say, Sarah Palin for vice president, and um, the fact that we've broken that barrier with secretaries of state now, Hillary, yeah, but the, before. the cabinet is unbelievable. Right, right, that I think that women, young women, see, you know, the visibility of, you know, women who are at the top. And I think we have a long way to go, believe it, I think, and I'm impatient, but I think we're making some visible, you know, right. once again, some visible uh, indications here for but, women. But uh, politically, how, do, how will they get together? Will there be a, you know, we used to think politically it was politics. Right. But that doesn't hold so much anymore, no. does it? I think, What's the difference? Well, I think politics does hold. I think that there's a, a consideration that a lot of young women understand that the that the stress on your life and your personal life and the amount of money, unfortunately, has kept a lot of people out of running for, you know, yeah. as you know, for elective office. Yeah. But uh, I think that it's in beyond politics. It's it's certainly in the corporate world. It's in the advocacy world. It's in connecting international with domestic feminism, the need to work, um, you know, on social justice causes, advocacy, organizing at the grassroots level. I think those are. I'm glad to say, very happy, very happy to say, very much alive now. Yeah, tell me where um, mostly in 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 New York in the environmental movement in violence, anti-violence movement, anti-rape, I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of women taking uh, a very key role, um, in terms of, obviously, certainly, reproductive rights, um, in terms of immigrant rights, you have tremendous right. young women taking a lead. So there. how do they affect the parties? That's what I meant. The poli oh, I see. It, it comes at the same time political parties have diminished, right, basically. Right, right, right. Because well, Because of the money that you have to gather and everything right. else. So we have all these different movements. How do we get them all together to affect who's elected to office? Right. I think that uh, many times, uh, well, first of all, personally, I think we have to really have to tackle, you know, the campaign finance thing. But besides that, and these it looks women, like it's going to get set behind. Yes, it is. And these women, young women, understand that pressure, political pressure, has to be brought to bear around the issues. So I, they yeah. will rally, you know, particular Congress people around those issues or council, state legislative people, and that's how it's done. More than the party mechanisms, mm -hmm. it's through, you know, the like the the sixties, the old issue lobbying, which right. you and came out of, right. you know, the whole anti-war stuff exactly. and the civil exactly. rights movement. Exactly. But it's um, it, it's fascinating to me that the women who have emerged <laughs> in the last year are yeah. these people, yeah. Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman. Yeah. I mean, what what is that? Well, that's because the con you know the conservative <laughs> right, the Tea yeah. Party. How did both. well? How did this conservative right? get so strong? Because they're, they have access to the media, the main media channels, and they're very good organizers. Mm -hmm. They are extremely good at unifying their message and, you know, their basic bottom line message. And Is you know, it that we aren't as good? I mean, were we better at one point? I think so. So we aren't as good now. Right. And that's because of the political system. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what I really think, too. Yeah. 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 It was interesting about Libya, wasn't it? Who were the people who wanted to go into Libya? Did well, you think about that? Oh, sure. It was actually there was something written about it. Yeah. How you know the women uh, were pushing. <laughs> Hillary was pushing hard, and uh, there was a lot of discussion of the foreign policy folk who were the women who were saying we have to do this, and some of the generals and some of the men in the cabinet were laying back. Yeah. And, you know, Gates was being. You yeah, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go on. Okay, it's yeah. okay. But you had to wonder what Bella would have said. She would have said, "No way, no how. This is outrageous. We have to stop this aggression." This repeated aggression, you know, now on a third war almost. Right. And, uh, you know, you know what I was saying to a lot of people uh, recently, my young women at Bali and the, the Bell Labs at Leadership Institute, and then I teach young women and men, there is no coraggio, courage. The That's electeds true. today in Congress, no, how many people are standing up and saying, this is unacceptable, we cannot do this? Whereas in the 70s, whether it be in the Congress or the Council, or whatever, you would see ideological opposition, and people would stand up and say, we're not going to allow this, uh, whether it's, you know, cutting back health care or not moving forward with health care or, you know, waging another war. 
you know, the excuse of terrorism, you have to do this because to stop terrorism, I don't think that's really a valid excuse when we're spending trillion, a trillion dollars on the war, whereas we can't even put clothes, house, and right. health care for our people. Isn't it interesting that we're talking about all these deficits and what's driving the deficit? Yeah, thank you. It's so yes. incredible, and nobody mentions it. That's not do you think because... Uh, running for public office has also changed. It's become a career ladder. Yes. And you're worried too much about yes. getting reelected. Yes. And uh, the money and, and, the, and the, the polls. The polls. The polls. The always polls. driven. And the money that right. you are investing of others and your own right. time is so, the stakes are so much higher because of that. But ideology still would get, get money. Strong. I, I believe that. Yeah. We saw you it with Obama. That. Yeah. We did. We did. Yeah. We did. Um, I was crestfallen when Blanche Lincoln adopted, I mean, that's just what we're talking about, adopted this concern. Do you remember when she first ran? Yeah. That was the cause with all the women. I know. Everybody was out there raising money for her and doing everything, and let's look what we got. Well, you know, my mom used to say back in the 70s, as you know, you know, the Senate, actually when she was in Congress, there were zero women in the Senate yeah. until, you know, later right. in the 70s. But uh, the thing that she used to say is that this is an elite club. The Senate was an elite club at that time because, you know, and now I wonder... The House was less so, but <laughs> if she saw what was going on there now, I mean... Yeah, the it, women it, have become part of the club. Exactly. There are, some, there are a few, out, I right. think, standouts. I agree. But they're not able to garner the kind of um, attention yeah. that Bella did, or exactly. maybe they don't have the strong enough... Yeah, Personalities personality. or, or, or the strategic sense that, yeah. you know... That, was her. that the most determining thing in her? She was very... Two, pass, two things, passion and... T passion, incredible intelligence, strategy, and dynamism that... It wasn't just the way the hats, and what, as you knew her as friends and as colleagues, but it was what was underneath the hat, as she would always say when people compliment. But, it, you know, it was amazing ability to grasp the workings of Congress, the needs to pass laws, but also having had her experience from the outside of government as an activist and as a civil rights lawyer, you know, and a labor lawyer, she understood how to bridge the two. And in my, in my bottom line analysis, uh, what I've learned is, and from her and clearly watching this, is that your passion and your soul, no matter what you're running for, have to, I think the people expect that you share your ecstasies and your agonies with them. And you stand, your principles become your backbone. That's right. You don't cut, you do, you, there you are can, bottom lines that you will yeah. not uh, give up. And I think that that, that creates a much more loyal following. I agree. And admiration. I agree. And respect. I mean, I, I, agree. I don't understand why people don't understand that that's an incredibly important political ingredient. I couldn't agree ingredient. with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> and, and that we've lost a sense of that. And that's mm -hmm. why I get aggravated when I don't see people in the House or the Senate. And we've lost some really great leaders, too, uh, along the way. I mean, let's be honest about that, too. Um, but, you know, the Kennedys, et cetera, but um, the Wellstones. But the point is, is that you, there is something lost in the connection between why we elect our, you know, our Congress, our elected officials and who they represent. And that, I largely believe, is a, a function of money, media, you know, unfortunately the way cable 24-7 represents yeah. a lot of times in yeah. these snippets, yeah. not a show like well, this. They have, but they have to have something to talk about, so they always exactly. want to look at the bad things exactly. to dramatic, and exactly. make it dramatic. Exactly. But uh, Nancy Pelosi was pretty principled. She is, she is. And she got killed. That's true. But she didn't have this, the, the ability to turn it around the way Bella did, That's, right? I believe that. Yeah. I agree. She, she, look, let's give her due credit. I mean, she really wielded and moved and, along the agenda. Right. However, in the end of the day, in the end of the day, she probably should have been tougher. And no matter what the stakes, bottom line, I will not uh, sacrifice the principles of my caucus, of this right. Congress, and, you know, no matter what it takes. Right. And, you know, I think she has a toughness, but it's not, uh, you know, enough, I, I feel. So we identified the problems in the older, in the, in the first wave. Right. I don't even know if that wasn't the first wave. But anyway, we Same. identified the problems. And now those problems have changed because they're no longer problems, a lot of them, right? Although there still are some. And the younger people are now going further into things. I mean, we never, we didn't identify date rape. Who ever heard of that, right? Right. right. Or, or even this, well, anyway, a lot of those issues. Yeah. So they've gone further in identifying more pro questions and problems. As they should. Yeah. As they should, because discrimination is either blatant or it's more subtle. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, thank God uh, we've worked on anti-discrimination laws that passed uh, to protect against sex and sexual harassment, sex discrimination in the 70s. Uh, and so people have learned somewhat, you know, in terms of the corporate structure, employers that the, yeah. sometimes they can't be as blamed. So, you know, young women have to be a lot more sophisticated. But you have to point this out to them. You know, you have to That's give them the context. Right. So what do you do? Are you teaching history as well? Um, to start with, you start from the beginning, from the suffragette to the present, and then to where their prescriptions are for the future. And I force, push, and encourage them to think, th to unpeel, to unpeel the uh, bananas to all the yes. things that are still not gender equal. What do they think is going to be the future? Um, they are hoping that there will be gender equity. They are hoping that the pay differentials will be equalized. They are hoping that work-life balance, a big thing for, for young women, will be achieved the more that uh, men are, you know, taking care of, also in the home, taking care of children. Um, and, uh, but I think there is a concern that after we go through this analysis that it's taking longer than it should. When I point out to them that there, we are not women even recognized as equal citizens under the United States Constitution and that we never passed the Equal right. Rights Amendment, I mean, some of them sit there with their mouths open yeah. and say, well, what I didn't that? know that. Yeah. yeah, what are you talking about? Right. Do they um, talk about wars and power and international? They talk a lot of interest, a lot of interest in international issues, but not so much on the war side in terms of uh, food security, environment, uh, in terms of violence against sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. They're very interested in that, mm -hmm. actually. I yeah, mean, that there, yeah. yeah. And what about how they feel about Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and Libya? Um, they are less vocal, but understand that this is a drain on the economy. But they're, I find them to be less, less out there in terms of protest against that yeah, and why, vocal protest. Why is that, do you think? I don't think we've been that successful lately in terms for, of our anti-war uh, well, organizing. Well, the first, the first demonstration, that big demonstration we had about Iraq was very exciting. That, right, but do you, have there been anything? And what happened after well, that? that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. What? It's almost like, it's almost like the, you know, you, the argument that Bush made for, prior to uh, Obama, you know, that we have to fight the war on terrorism. I mean, that that whole question and 9-11 and how you weigh, how you protect a country versus, you know, being an aggressor in war, it's confused a lot of people. And I do think that once you go through the dialogue with young women, they get it. But the focus seems to be, in my view, uh, you know, not so much on that in terms more yeah. on the other issues that I yeah. just said. I remember when you were a student at the High School of Music and Art <laughs> and that great teacher strike and your mother crossing the picket line and all of the people who were excited about that issue, whether for it or against it or whatever. Look at what's happening to the school system. What, where are the parents? I would like to know. I would like to know. Well, they fought around the chancellor appointment, you know, yeah. as you know. Yeah. But I think it's at a local, in the community, when you go to meetings that are held by the principals in the, t in the community at night, you know, you do get you see that you, the uh, yeah you can anger, see the right. anger and you can see the the real need uh, the real desire to change the right. thing so but not in a mass kind of yeah, movement way I, it, it's very interesting to me um, I don't let's talk about a little bit about Gerald Ferraro because yeah. I was thinking about Bella a lot then me too um, you remember when she was nominated yes. <laughs> <laughs> 84. Right. Who could forget? And then they ran the election. And of course, it was stunning for people to see a woman up there. Yes, it was. But tears, tears. Everybody, yeah, so right. many tears. But this adoration and, and admiration now, and I'm not speaking evil of the dead. Oh, I am not. And I yeah. knew Jerry well, and I always liked her, and we were, you know, that kind of stuff. But what did that mean to you? Well, the day of the <laughs> funeral... Yeah. Jerry's funeral, which was March 31st, was also the anniversary of Mom's death. Mm. And we were all, all of us at the funeral. And, of course, she had like a state funeral. I mean, the yeah. President Clinton, Hillary Clinton, you know, Mondale, Vice President, former President. Uh, I mean, Vice President, you had uh, Madeleine Albright. And I was saying this is really pretty remarkable because she's getting some terrific acknowledgement. But largely, I thought, Jerry is a friend, and I loved her dearly and close to her daughter. But I think that it was such a barrier breaker, you see, that one nomination, first woman being nominated for under a major party for 
one of the two top offices in the land, that in, in now, moving forward, from that point forward... It's there, a legend. It's a legend. But in between... I know. There I know. was not an activist spirit, right? True. I mean, I but True. thinking about Bella True. and the difference. No comparison. In fact, you know that Jerry took a lot, what, considered my mother a mentor, uh, and, you know, because mom was in the Congress first, and then Jerry came later, was slightly younger. But, no, it's not the same breed of politics. You know, my, ki my mom grew up a poor kid in the Bronx, so does Jerry from yeah, you know meager right. beginnings, but she comes out of movements politics. Right. You know that. That's true. That's, that's, the, that's the difference. Now maybe that's the difference. Yeah. Is that the difference with everybody? I believe that's true. Is there anybody in Congress that came out of movement politics? <sighs> Currently, yeah, there uh, is. I mean, Michelle Bachman. <laughs> yeah, on the other side, <laughs> on the wrong side of movement politics. Let me think. Um, not. I mean, maybe some of the women from California, um, right? You, you know, the some old, of the Latina, older, or, yeah. and some of the Latina women, yeah. who the younger right. Latina women. Um, uh, maybe uh, it's not it's really yeah. not really there. It's a very interesting difference. Yeah. So, since we now have all these young women committed and dedicated to their own issues, maybe they'll create that as movement politics. Well, I hope so. I hope so, and I see some of that. I see in terms of um, sustainable development and community development mm -hmm. context, you know, in local sustainable South Bronx, which my friend Majora Carter yeah. started, boy, there's a mix between the conditions and the terrible uh, daily life conditions that some people are living in and the need to organize more broadly around that. And I see that there is a, a we got to make the international American, the international women's movement linked to the American women's movement, we have to revitalize. As I say to my young women, uh, students and friends, you have to reclaim. You have to reclaim. You do it your way, but we need to revitalize the feminist movement. You want to talk about it in 21st century terms, it's fine with me. You call yourself an equalist, that's my word, or you want to call yourself a feminist or whatever. We need to be out there. It's not just on social media and on social mm -hmm. networking, okay? Because there's nothing that will ever substitute. I mean, I'm all for that. We all have to deal, we are all on it. but. There will be nothing that substitutes the one-on-one -on -one, interaction. And also the, the, the effect of a crowd, That's of right. a lot of people. That's right, where you see it, it's visible. I mean, those demonstrations and the right. spirit that comes out is so inspiring, it's, nothing can match that. Absolutely. Right. And I'm so, pushing them, I push them hard on that point. Yeah. You know? So what, what, sh what should we do? What should the next uh, big demonstration be? Uh, for, <laughs> for women or for everybody? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Jobs, sanity, Peace, how do we justice. How do we, when you talk about jobs, how do we reverse this? How do we say the first people we have to get rid of are public servants? <laughs> what, what, what? Blaming the victim, you know. What, it, what is, how do you straighten out the mentality that seems to be, I, actually I think they may be doing their own undoing eventually because it's so. so extreme and I, so bad. I, I think that's what's happening. But this, it, what it is is, does, is it that people have so few principles that they go along with the crowd? I mean, we've got good Democrats who say, you know, you got to, the president froze salaries. All right, so yeah. that's not what's causing a deficit. No, no it is absolutely, and, it's such an infinitesimal part and of to the budget. Cut, to cut that expense budget of salaries. Right. And we, then to cut the services. Right. It does, because the people, the people all over the country are working people, middle class, working, working everybody, is not standing up and saying, you know, don't be ridiculous. This is not what's putting us in such a deficit. This is, these are good jobs. This is the backbone of America. Right. Stop, you know, blaming who's, who's us. Who's doing it? The problem is it's the unions who are doing it, and then everybody says, well, you have a vested interest. In. Well, I know. You I know? know, but it can't, it's got to go beyond the unions, yeah. you know? Right. So uh, how do we do that? Is it the media that's doing this, and that all the ejections are underneath on the internet, or uh, what is it? I think it's the voice of do the we? conservative Republicans, and since they have the majority in the House, I think that, and between that and Fox News and other media outlets, that they've, their propaganda has really gone a far way to dominate this discussion. And we're not dramatic enough. I think you have to be a drama queen oh, yeah. to drama. do this. What do they call it, a drama? Yes. Is that it? Yes, drama uh, queen. Maybe that's what you should do. Oh, I agree. Oh, me or everybody? Yeah, well, well, I don't know anybody yeah. else who's doing oh. it. But, you know, what you else? know, everybody who succeeds has that 
extra bit of right, right. But outrageousness. I, as we know, true, but as we know, it's interesting. The polls are recently showing that the, notwithstanding the drama of Sarah Palin, that she's extremely unpopular now. Right. One of the latest polls shows right. yeah, she has she, like a 27% yeah, She's become approval. such a lightweight. That's, right. You know, she's well, too much too in Alaska. Too much in Alaska, not enough intelligence. Right. And people are scared by the, you know, the, right. the quips that she makes right. that are not really deep and really analyzed. But um, what I was going to say was is that... Uh, we should probably be more a drama and more radical and more vociferous and and really you know stand up yeah. stand up with courage stand up and articulate this this is something young pe young people have to do so you've got to find some dramatic teachers to come into that's your court. right that's well right. Bella, uh, Bella, I was going to call you Bella Sorry. see that's what well you're, you're not just, the only one you're as magnetic <laughs> as I guess as she is so maybe you've got to take on this more responsibility um, thank you and I hope that you reach many, many young people. And actually, I hope you bring them together with some of the older people. I am doing that, trying okay. every day. All Thank right. You, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Happy International Women's Day. And we must use the strength of the United Nations to end the war against the civil rights of women and the human rights of women and our children and people everywhere. This, I suggest to you, is the purpose of our meeting and we must make certain that the millennium will be not only the year but the century of the women is there any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore please let me know you can write to me at cuny tv 365 fifth avenue new york new york 10016 or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on contact us i look forward to hearing from you